Hey guys, it's me, Dr. May. How are you? All right, so today um, we're doing a motion regulation, but we're doing a quick overview of all the skills, okay? So we're just gonna breeze through all the main um, skills taught in DBT for emotion regulation. And this video could serve two main purposes. One, if you're already familiar with the skills and you've been through the module before, it's a great way to just remind yourself of what they all are, just to kind of keep it fresh in your mind. Um, also, if you've never done emotion regulation skills before, it'll give you a sense of what DBT has to offer. And if any of them um, strike you as something that could be helpful, you could you know, then go to another video where they're explained more fully, and then you, know, you can look into exactly what it's all about and how you could apply it to yourself. Um, and of course, you could also look in the manual for more information. All right, but um, that's the goal of today. So it's kind of like a lightning round. We're just gonna go video, I'm sorry, uh, skill by skill, okay? So um, just a general overview as usual for what is emotion regulation? So these are a set of skills to help us regulate our emotions. Because chances are, if you made it to DBT, you might have been struggling with your emotions. It may have been hard to manage them. Maybe they're driving your bus, they're kind of getting in the way. They're too intense for you to, to get on with your life. Um, they're leading you to engage in target behaviors. Maybe it's wrecking your relationships because you know, your emotions are kind of spilling over there. All right, so these skills kind of help us to control what we're feeling, how long we're feeling it, the intensity of the emotions, and give us some coping skills for when we're experiencing them. All right, so there's a whole, whole bunch of stuff involved here. Okay, so. Um, so this is like an overall diagram we could kind of think about when we organize all the skills that DBT has to offer. So um, in a very general way, um, we start out with a vulnerability. Um, so it has to do with maybe there's a whole buildup of stresses in our life. Or maybe, um, you know, physiologically, I'm a little bit more um, vulnerable or I'm a little under the weather or I'm not feeling at my best. And so when a stressor comes my way, the vulnerability is I'm more likely to react in a strong emotional manner, okay? So the vulnerability affects the whole chain here. So then um, the event is when, you know, something in, inside or outside triggers us to experience all the things in that center column. So our emotions might flare up, we might have thoughts related to those emotions, our body starts reacting emotionally, and they all interact with each other, and that's why there are double arrows. And based on that middle stuff, we start to develop action urges. So we start to feel like doing certain things in response to what we're experiencing on the inside. And then eventually, we'll engage in an action. And from that action are certain consequences or after effects, okay? So DBT is really um, dealing with this really well because the skills intervene at all different points of this diagram. So the ABC please skill helps to reduce vulnerability to negative emotions. So that deals with the vulnerability part. The problem solving for emotions helps us to change the prompting events or deal with those events differently so that the middle column and the actions are different. Um, when we do check the facts, it's kind of like looking at the way we're thinking about things and kind of getting a broader sense of, am I seeing this accurately? Mindfulness and acceptance of current emotions is about accepting and tuning into the thoughts, emotions, and body sensations we're experiencing in this moment. And through that mindfulness and acceptance, we're relating to them in such a way that the emotions start to calm down and might shift a little bit. Then um, opposite to emotion action deals with ur action urges and the actions themselves. So it's about doing the opposite of what you feel like doing. So in the end, it helps create a different result. And of course, when you change different aspects of this diagram using your DBT skills, the after effects might be a lot better than what you used to experience before, especially if the action had to do with something related to a target behavior. Okay, so we're gonna go skill by skill and do a, a review of all these. Okay, so first, decrease vulnerability to negative emotions. So first, we talked about the ABC, the next slide will do, please. Okay, so um, in one video, we did just the ABC portion. So the first one's accumulating positive emotions. So doing things or shifting your attention to the positive in the short term 
and the long term so that you have that cushion. So when the stressor comes your way, at least it's like positive things in your experience that make you feel that the, the negative stuff isn't so bad. So if I get a stressor, but I have that background of some positivity, the stressor doesn't completely take over and you know really ruin my day. All right, the building mastery is the same kind of thing. So if I do things that make me feel good about myself, that make me feel like I'm accomplishing something, that make me feel like I'm achieving something, that kind of provides another positive background that could be there for me when I experience a stressor and therefore will prevent the stressor from taking over and really destroying my, my, my day, okay? Um, then the C um, is a little different from the A and B because this is coping ahead of time with emotional situations or the cope ahead skill. So this is like looking ahead at the, your week, for example, thinking about what might be coming up for you and then trying to plan in advance how you might cope so you're not caught by surprise when the event actually happens. Okay, because sometimes we can anticipate, you know, what might be a stressful interaction or some kind of event that'll be hard for us, right? So we could plan ahead how we might be able to deal with it when we get there. All right, next. Okay, so this is the please part of ABC Please, also about decreasing vulnerability to negative emotions. So this one is a little different because it's all about the mind body connection. So it's dealing with the physical aspects of ourselves to make them a little bit more strong and a little bit healthier so that you know, we're able to deal with the emotions, which also affect our physiology when the emotions come. So things we can do, treat physical illness, balance eating, avoid mood altering drugs, which often impact our emotions, obviously, balance sleep, so we're not too tired, tired and cranky, and get exercise, a universally great thing you can do for your body and your mood, okay? So uh, a lot more detail about this, but that's generally what you need to do. Okay, so the next one is uh, checking the facts. So this has to do with your thoughts, right? So if you remember back to um, emotional mind, reasonable mind, wise mind from the mindfulness module, checking the facts is a little bit more of like introducing some reasonable mind into the situation. So your emotions might be providing you with some information about what's going on because our emotions, you know, can give us, you know, information about what other people are doing, what we're feeling, what we're experiencing you know, what our motivations are, but they're not always accurate. Um, sometimes they're based on past experiences and they're not necessarily representing what's going on right now, 100% accurate. So it's important for us to balance that by doing a reality check, asking ourselves certain key questions and checking the facts of the situation. So we see things fully and clearly and can then make better decisions about what to do. Okay, so check the facts skill gives us a series of questions we could ask ourselves in order to kind of get more clear. All right, next, opposite to emotion action. So this one's about your action urge. So it's about identifying what the emotion is and what you feel like doing, and then doing the opposite of what you feel like doing. So if you act with the emotion and what you feel like doing, the emotion tends to increase. But if you act the opposite, the emotion, the emotion tends to decrease and you start to calm down. So for example, if I was really angry and I really felt like punching somebody and then I started punching somebody or I started punching my pillow or kicking the wall, my anger would probably increase because I'm acting with my emotion. If I did the opposite and I gently walked away from the person or thing that's making me angry, that would make the emotion decrease, okay? So that's generally the idea here. Okay, problem solving for emotions. So main idea here is if it's possible to fix the problem, that's causing you to experience unpleasant emotions, so this is activating event, then why not fix it, right? Maybe there's something we can do. So there's, a, there's two videos about this. The first one goes over problem solving steps we can take. So if we identify what the issue is that's triggering us to feel a certain way, and we follow these steps, we might be able to start to change these activating events. So just really quickly, so first we'll just, in a neutral way, identify what the problem is, identify what our goal is in solving the problem, like what do I wanna get out of the situation, brainstorm possible solutions, pick one, and start trying it out. And if that thing you tried didn't work, try something else. All right, so in a nutshell, that's basically what it is. The uh, problem solving steps video gives specific examples, but that's basically the steps to follow. 
Okay, so the next video about problem solving is kind of set up like this. So we talk about different emotions. We go emotion by emotion, and we identify justifying events, which are essentially the prompting events. And they're typical prompting events that lead most people to experience that emotion. So therefore, if you experience those events, chances are you might feel that way. And you can validate yourself because it kind of makes a lot of sense. Um, and then you could take some problem solving actions to ch help change or deal with those justifying events. And when you change the triggers, you therefore could change the emotion, right? So if I'm always hanging around with a toxic person that's making me feel angry and annoyed and drained, maybe it's time to spend less time with that person or set boundaries with that person or tell them what I think we should be talking about instead of what they always want to talk about, right? Maybe there's things I can do to change that prompting event so that I don't keep feeling that same way. Okay, and finally, mindfulness and acceptance of our emotions. So this is pulling in some skills from other modules that you may have heard of before. So mindfulness has to do with moment-to-moment -moment awareness of your current situation. And there's three main components of my mindfulness, which have to do with focused attention, open awareness, and kind intention. So we're gonna take those mindfulness skills here and use them toward our emotional experience. So instead of fighting and hating our emotions, which we often do, we're just gonna observe it, um, notice what it feels like in our body, notice what our emotional thoughts are doing. We're gonna bring acceptance toward our emotional experience and even some kind intention, which includes love and compassion and empathy. And doing that helps to shift our emotional experience because just like when you feel loved, you're a little bit different, your emotions also get a little bit different when they experience mindfulness, love, and acceptance, okay? So that's basically it. Um, I'm gonna stop the share here. All right, so that was kind of quick, right? Um, so those are basically the skills. Again, if you wanna learn more about any one of them, feel free to watch one of my other videos, which go into much greater detail, or read your manual. All right, so, um, Hope that helps and uh, see you next time. All right, bye everybody.